You're right that money can uh, almost always be very easily replaced. Um, capital is capital, money is fungible. But you're also very right to point out that on technology, uh, this is not very easily fungible. Many of these things are proprietary. They need to work with the stack, that it is not very easy to swap out an NVIDIA chip and replace that with a uh, Chinese chip. And here is where China is still pretty far behind. I think that on the very best uh, that China is, five to 10 years behind the market leader TSMC in the actual fabrication of logic chips. China may be quite a bit closer in memory chips, and that is pretty important as well. But uh, very significantly, China is even further behind on a lot of the semiconductor production equipment, the lithography equipment, uh, extreme ultraviolet uh, lithography technologies. This is where they're going to stumble. I think this is a very hard road to walk. And uh, with these U.S. restrictions, it is going to be ever more challenging for China to figure these things out. Now, I believe that Chinese firms will be able to figure out a lot of these technologies over the longer run. These are technologies. These are not magic. But it really comes down to a question of how long the longer run is and whether these Chinese firms will be able to withstand a lot of uh, political as well as market pressures uh, all the way through that point. And that, that's exactly what I wanted to ask you because you, you, you touched on a lot of things I was going to bundle into one because if you have all of these impositions, if you have the, the no access to ASMLs, you know, advanced lithography, if you have all of these constraints on Chinese technology, does that not even further stunt the development of Chinese AI or is it something that you can throw money at? Because I asked this question within the context of, say, for example, you were to build six high-end data centers instead of having one and asking it to run the same kind of, you know, AI program or AI, generative AI processes as that one really good one. Is that enough? If you get what I'm su suggesting or is it just... It, it... Oh, no, go on. Yes, absolutely. I think there will be uh, very big challenges on AI in particular, that China is weak both on hardware as well as the software to really make uh, AI work in China. But what I like to try to keep in mind always is that it is not going to be AI that determines the future of this contest uh, between the U.S. and China. Both countries are large wealthy, industrialized economies uh, that are going to be competing on very many fronts. I think it is going to be the case, um, very likely, that China will fall behind the U.S. on AI, that China, for all of its prowess, will suffer, uh, at least in the short, medium, perhaps even long run, on AI technologies. But my view is that AI is not the entire game. What I like to point out is that China surpassed Japan as the world's uh, second largest uh, as, uh, automotive exporter. It surpassed Germany as the second largest automotive exporter last year. It is on track to surpass Japan as the largest automotive exporter this year. It is absolutely dominant on all sorts of clean technologies, whether that is solar or whether that is uh, batteries, and that China is manufacturing a whole lot of other things. Now, uh, AI is certainly very important, but I don't believe that is the uh, whole game. And I think that, um, you know, it is in, a, in case that there are serious trade issues between these two countries, I'm not sure that you American AI is necessarily going to beat China's strengths in cultivating a very large and adaptive manufacturing base.